woman broke in. Did I not tell you not to do wrong to the boy? But you would not listen. Now comes a reckoning for his blood. The brothers did not know, of course, that jo Joseph understood what they said. Since he spoke with them through an interpreter, but turning away from them, he wept. The word of the Lord. Thanks. 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 Responsorial Psalm. Lord, let your mercy be on us as we place our trust in you. Lord, let your mercy be on us as we place our trust in you. Give thanks to the Lord on the harp. With the ten strings lyre, chant his praises. Sing to him a new song. Pluck the strings skillfully with shouts of gladness. Lord, Lord let your mercy be on us as we place our trust in you. The Lord brings to naught the plans of nations. He foils the designs of people. But the plan of the Lord stands forever. The design of his heart through all his generations. Lord, let your mercy be on us as we place our trust in you. But see, the eyes of the Lord are upon those who fear him, upon those who hope for his kindness, to do Deliver them from death and preserve them in spite of famine. Lord, let the mercy be on us as we place our trust in you. gave them authority over unclean spirits to drive them out and cure every disease and every illness. The names of the twelve apostles are those first, Simon called Peter, and his brother Andrew, James the son of Zebedee, his brother John, Philip and Bartholomew, Thomas and, and Matthew the tax collector, James the son of Alphaeus and Thaddeus, Simon the Candian, and Judas Iscariot, who betrayed Jesus. Jesus sent out these twelve after instructing them thus, Do not go into pagan territory or enter a Samaritan town. Go rather to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. As you go, make this proclamation. The kingdom of heaven is at hand. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise Praise to you, Lord Jesus. Today's reading is about the selection of certain individuals for mission or a specific mission. The first reading, we hear that the famine broke out, and Pharaoh instructed Joseph, who was the governor, who was the governor that was selected by Pharaoh, to go ahead and take care of all the Egyptians and their, their rations of hay. Now it's not just about the Egyptians that Pharaoh had to take care of. It was also about the rest of the people that were under the Egyptian rule, including the house of Israel. In the gospel today, Jesus summoned the 12 disciples and gave them authority over unclean spirits and to also cure for every disease and every illness that there was. And then he sent them out into the lost sheep of Israel, but not to Samaria or to the other Gentiles. Now he chose the Jews because they were the chosen people, which the people that God had chosen for himself. Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob were the sheep of the fold, but 
because of the sinful nature of the children of Israel, they were, they were separated from the fold. And therefore, Jesus wanted to send out the twelve to bring them back into the fold. Now, God does not leave them or leave or desert them or leave them in the dust just because they are sinful. He does not do, it, do that with either of us as well. We know this, especially from the many readings in the scripture that he's given the Israelites as well as us many opportunities, such as a fig tree that he would not cut it down until he was able to dig around it and try to work around it and then bring it back to life as possible. And also about the trimming of the lamp over and over before it was sent out into the darkness. Jesus directed his disciples on what to preach as well. He said, the kingdom of heaven is at hand. What he means by this, and this has been said many times in scripture by Jesus and also by John the Baptist, is that he's warning that there's opportunities for us to turn away from sin, turn away from things that we should not be doing. But the time for that opportunity is slowly closing for us to have entrance into the kingdom. And the door is open with the promise of pardon and the promise of grace for our sins. But again, the door is closing. And once it's closed, it can never be open again. Twelve apostles were the first missionaries. And Jesus called each of them by name and also by what they, he had plans for them. First, he called Simon Peter and his brother Andrew and James and John, and because of their skills that they would be needed in his ministry. One of the other 12 is Matthew. Matthew's a tax collector. And that's kind of an interesting person that Jesus would select because in Jewish society, the Jewish people do not like the tax collector because they consider them sinners, because they were those that were hobnobbling and, and working with the Pharisees and the Roman Empire, the, the Roman governors and all those that are associated with the Romans. So he most certainly would not be regarded as someone that Jesus would choose, but Jesus chose Matthew. And of course, lastly, Jesus chose Judas Iscariot. Of course, you know what happened later on in terms of what he would be, what he would be doing in terms of um, later on um, in the ministry of Jesus. Now, if we were to look at all of these men, they were fishermen, a tax collector, and basically nobodies. And they're just ordinary people, and these are the kinds of people that Jesus called, not the ones that were rich and wealthy or had a lot of power or anything like that, just ordinary people to, do, to probably do extraordinary things. Just regular people, people like you and me. So you may wonder why Jesus would choose just ordinary people like the disciples or like you and me. For the most part, ordinary people would probably heal the will of God and the call of God. And as believers, we believe and we trust in God, and we also trust in his commission to ministry. We are what we I would call maybe the goal missionaries or the co-missionaries, but definitely not the no missionaries. So we in doing his will and answering his calling, we give God glory and praise. The mission of the first missionaries and, the, and even the present day missionaries were different, but nonetheless, they're the same. Jesus sent out the 12 to Israel only, not to anybody else, but just those chosen people. Our mission is much broader than that. Our mission is to take our message Jesus and to God out into the world. Our mission field today is the world. The world is not always a far-fetched place like some other continent, Africa, South America, Russia, any of those, Asia, any of those countries, or anything like that. We can't all do that. Some of us can go out into the world that far, but most of us can't. And for those that, like ourselves, that we can't, you know, our world is a world outside of our home, outside of our community here, out into our neighborhoods, out into the city, out into the state, out into the nation, whatever that is. Because, after all, our mission is to take the message to all, quote, unquote, nations. 
our, our mission is the world, and it is also our privilege and our responsibility to, to take care of the world and to bring that message to the world. We must be actively doing it as well as spreading the gospel and be willing to go there. We must also be disciples to others and to support them in their mission as well. We're all ordinary people, but we can do extraordinary things. We can't physically drive out demons or cure or every illness or every disease. Maybe some of us can, but most of us can't. But we can heal somebody's spirit, or we can restore somebody's belief in themselves. We can give others with our love, our compassion, our attention, and also our care, just as we've been gifted by our Heavenly Father. Mother Teresa is one of my favorite saints, and she has so many quotes, and I love every one of them. But maybe I just want to share a few of her quotes, or her words, to you today. We can do ordinary things with extraordinary love. We can do extraordinary things with love. Not all of us can do great things, but we can do small things with great love. I don't do great things, but I do small things with great love. So maybe these words can be an inspiration to us as we put those in our hearts and as we go out into the world to spread God's gospel and also to do God's will and also to answer his call. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. 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 Brothers and sisters, gather as one to celebrate the good things that we have received from our God. Let us ask him to prompt in us prayers that are worthy of his hearing. For the church, may grow stronger in faith and generosity, we pray to the Lord. For the world and all of God's people, may they grow in love for our brothers and sisters, we pray to the Lord. For the wisdom of all God's people to care for our hurt, we pray to the Lord. For all of us here today to recognize and appreciate the prophets among us, we pray to the Lord. Lord hear our prayers. For the end of the COVID-19 pandemic and all the sick, that they may know the consolation and healing that comes from Christ, we pray to the Lord. Lord hear our prayers. Let's take a moment in silence and ask God to, to guide us and to pray for those that we hold dear in our hearts and for the things that we hold dear as well. Pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayers. May the petition of your church be pleasing in your sight, O Lord, so that we may receive from your mercy what we cannot ask out of confidence or our own merits through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, let us dare to recite the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art Peace of the Lord be with all of you. And with your spirit. Let us offer one another a sign of peace.
that takes away the sins of the world. Happy are those who are called to the supper of the Lord. An act of spiritual communion. My Jesus, I believe you are present in the most holy sacrament, and I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. 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 Communion service today is offered for Anthony Noresti and Maximino Pagaseo. The communion antiphon today. Taste and see that the Lord is good. Blessed is the man who seeks refuge in him. Let us pray. Lord Jesus, you gave us the Eucharist as a memorial of your suffering and of your death. May our worship of the sacrament of your body and blood help us to experience the salvation that you have won for us and the peace of the kingdom where you live and reign with the Father and the Holy Spirit, 
one God forever and ever. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And, and with your spirit. spirit. May the Almighty God bless you. The Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Our communion service is ended. Go forth and glorify the Lord with your Thank life. Thanks. 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 Thanks.